A welcome, boys and girls, to another online Sunday school. It is a shame, isn't it, that we can't meet in the community centre like we've been doing for the last few weeks, but we are so thankful to the Lord that we can meet together in this way, that we can hear the gospel and that our teachers can explain to us from the Bible what it means. And so we pray that you will listen to these lessons and that you will find them helpful and most importantly that you will come to find the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour. Well, shall we come to the Lord God in prayer together? Let us pray. Dear Lord and loving Heavenly Father, Lord, Thou art such a kind and a merciful God. Lord, Thou hast created this whole world that we can see, all the big mountains, all the vast seas. Lord, Thou art the one that's created the smallest of insects and the largest of animals. Lord, Thou art surely such a great God. And Lord, Thou art the God that has created us as people and we have rejected thee, we have rebelled against thee, we have done what we wanted to do. So Lord, we ask that thou would forgive us, we confess our sins, and we know, Lord, that we need a saviour. So we pray, Lord, come and meet with us today. Help us, Lord, to understand what we hear. Help us, Lord, to love thee with all of our heart. We pray, Lord, that in this time of coronavirus, that thou would bless us. We pray, Lord, that thou would keep us and our families from danger. We pray that thou would keep us safe. So, Lord, we ask that thou would be with us at this time. Bless us now. We pray these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and for his sake. Amen. Well, boys and girls, as you know, the last few weeks, we haven't been able to do things in Sunday school quite the way that we would normally. And one of the things we haven't been able to do is sing together. We like singing these choruses. They help us to remember the things that the Lord Jesus Christ has done. And so we're going to sing a chorus this morning that I think you know very well. Jesus the Saviour is of boys and girls. about Moses recently from the book of Exodus and Becky's going to bring us a lesson today from that series. Good morning and welcome to online Sunday school again. Can you turn in your Bibles with me to the book of Exodus? Exodus is really easy to find because it's right near the beginning of the Bible. It's after Genesis and it's the second book. If you turn to chapter 5 we will look at the verse there all together in a minute. We're going to carry on learning about Moses, as we have been doing in class. Remember, he was rescued from the bulrushes by Pharaoh's daughter, and he went to live in the palace and was brought up as an Egyptian. But we learned that as he grew older, he was unhappy with how the Hebrew slaves were being treated. And he had to leave Egypt in a hurry after he struck and killed one of the Egyptians who was beating a slave. He went to live in the wilderness. He got married and had two sons and worked as a shepherd for his father-in-law. One day he was on his own with his sheep in the wilderness when he saw a strange sight. A bush was on fire but it wasn't being burned up. And God spoke to him through that burning bush and told him that he wanted him to go back to Egypt. Do you remember all of this? Well, if you read with me in Exodus chapter five and verse one, we will find out what the Lord God wanted Moses to say to Pharaoh when he got back to Egypt. It says, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go. Let's find out what happened. So Moses and Aaron went to see Pharaoh. They told him God's message. 
let my people go. Pharaoh was very proud. He said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? It shocks us that Pharaoh would think that he was equal to or better than the God of the whole universe. But we can be a bit the same, can't we? We might say or think, why should I listen to God and what he says in the Bible? Why should I do what he says? I'll do what I want, thank you. Pharaoh was so cross that he decided to make the slaves work even harder every day. This didn't make him very popular with the Israelites. And it didn't make Moses very popular either. They told him off for making their lives harder. But it wasn't Moses' fault, was it? God had a rescue plan and Moses was doing what God had told him. God's plans always work out for the good of his people, even when they don't seem to be. It wasn't very long before Moses and Aaron went back to see Pharaoh to say that because he had refused to let God's people go, the river would be turned to blood. The river was very important to the Egyptians' way of life. Moses put his rod into the water and the river did turn to blood. How horrible. It stank. The fish died and all the water turned to blood. There wasn't a drop to drink. But Pharaoh thought it was a trick and he shut his ears and hardened his heart. After a week, God sent Moses back to Pharaoh and said, Thus saith the Lord, let my people go. And if you refuse, a plague of frogs will come. Well, Pharaoh did not let the Hebrew slaves go. So God sent the frogs. So many frogs. Frogs everywhere. In the streets, in the wells, in the fields, in their beds, even in their pots and pans. It was unbearable. Pharaoh begged that Moses would get rid of them and he would let the people go. But as soon as the frogs were gone, he broke his promise. Oh dear. And so the Lord God sent lice, horrible itchy lice, on all the people and all the animals. Pharaoh's magicians couldn't help him. They couldn't make lice come like God could. They said, this is the finger of God. But Pharaoh wouldn't listen. He didn't come to his senses. He didn't give up on his pride. He hardened his heart once again. So the Lord told Moses to get up early and go and see Pharaoh and ask him again to let his people go or there would be swarms and swarms of flies. Not on the Hebrew slaves, only on the Egyptians, so that Pharaoh would know that God was real and powerful and acting on behalf of his people. And the flies came. Oh, how they came. They couldn't be escaped. Pharaoh had to do something. So he said that the slaves could worship God, but not in the wilderness. They had to stay in Egypt. Moses insisted that they must go three days journey into the wilderness. And if Pharaoh agreed, he would ask God to take away the flies. Pharaoh agreed. But as soon as the flies were gone, he changed his mind again. And so the Lord, after another warning to Pharaoh, brought in another plague. This time, all the animals of Egypt were struck down dead. But none of the Israelite animals were killed. Pharaoh set his heart against God. He chose again not to listen. He did not let the people go. How many chances was God going to give Pharaoh? How patient he was. He was going to show all his signs and wonders so that Pharaoh and the Egyptians knew that he was God and he was going to rescue his people. So now the Lord God sent boils, 
painful lumps and bumps all over the people and animals. They were so painful. And even though it was his hard heart that had brought God's plagues on his people, Pharaoh still would not let God's people go. Pharaoh set himself against God. He thought that somehow he was better than even the Lord God, that he could stand against him and somehow win. But the Bible tells us that God resists proud people, people who will not repent and will not obey. And we should learn from Pharaoh and be warned that setting our hearts against God is a terrible mistake. And so God sent hailstones. He sent hail, thunder and fire. And the crops and trees were ruined and all the barley and flax was destroyed. What would the people eat? Pharaoh said that he had done wrong and that Moses could go. But as soon as the thunder and the hail and the fire stopped falling, guess what he did? He changed his mind. Moses and Aaron went back to see Pharaoh again. They said, God says, how long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go. If you refuse, I will bring locusts and they will eat everything that has escaped the hailstorm. They will fill your houses and cover the face of the earth. But when Pharaoh understood that all the Israelites and their animals were going to leave, he refused to let them all go. And so the locusts came, great crowds of them, clouds and clouds of them. They ate everything in sight. Not one green thing was left. Pharaoh was desperate and he called for them to ask God to remove the locusts. But once the locusts were gone, Pharaoh wouldn't let the people go. He couldn't bear to lose all his slaves after losing all his crops and animals. He was thinking of being rich and powerful here on earth. He wasn't thinking about what was really important, was he? And we can do that too, can't we? We think about the here and now, and we make things more important than God. But things won't help us with our sinful hearts. Things won't give us peace with God. In fact, they keep us from him sometimes. And so God brought a terrifying darkness over all the land of Egypt. It was absolute, unbroken, thick darkness. It was so dark that you could feel it. Nobody moved for three days. Time was running out for Pharaoh. God would not be patient much longer. His people would be set free. God showed his awesome power and control over all things through those plagues, didn't he? Pharaoh's reaction warns us not to resist God, who is so far, far above us. His heart was hard. He didn't believe that God is the one true God. He refused to obey him. We must obey God's word too, but we find it impossible because of our sinful hearts. We may resist God like Pharaoh, or we might just not take him very seriously. Our sin means that we can't come near to a holy God, which means that we can't be with him in heaven when our life here is over. We will have to go far away from him and all that is good to a place called hell. Oh dear, this is a big problem. What are we going to do? Well, next week we will learn much more about this. But please listen, God is 
searingly pure and holy, but he is also incredibly merciful and kind. He knows we need help. He knows that we are slaves to sin and we need rescuing just as the Hebrew slaves did. He sent his son to earth to live a life with no sin. We can't live like that, can we? We sin all of the time. Well, the Lord Jesus died on the cross for sins that he never did, so that he could rescue sinners like us from God's anger and punishment for sin. If we trust in Jesus and ask him to help us with our sinful hearts, if we're truly sorry and ask for forgiveness, do you know what happens? We are changed from the inside out. We're forgiven. We have peace with God. And when God looks on us, he sees Jesus, our perfect saviour instead. I wonder if you've come to the saviour like that. Or are you like Pharaoh? Is your heart hard? Or is it humble and sorry? Boys and girls, I would urge you not to be like Pharaoh. Come to the Lord Jesus today and ask him to help you with your sin. Now, shall we come before the Lord God in prayer? Let us pray. Dear Lord and loving Heavenly Father, we thank thee for this lesson that we can learn. We think, Lord, of how Pharaoh was so stubborn. He refused to listen. And, Lord, we know that we can be stubborn as well. And we ask, Lord, that thou would soften our hearts. Help us, Lord, to come to thee and with desire that we should want to be saved. And so, Lord, we ask that thou would forgive us of our sins. And this week we pray, Lord, that thou would keep us, that thou would keep us safe, and that thou would keep us thinking of important spiritual things. So bless us now, we pray, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, do join us again next week for the next lesson in our series.